Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Macrocast, your source for news and entertainment with the minds behind Macro Records. Guten Morgen. We are your hosts. I'm Matson. I'm Download. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome. We have back. a good show for you. We have lots week. of stuff, lots of interesting things, and cool you know, stuff. we're blurring the lines between insanity and. <laughs> <laughs> insanity if only <laughs> if only our show was that interesting oh you're good we're gonna take you guys to places that you've never been before probably not so like nepal uh well god damn you man <laughs> <laughs> didn't you want to talk about like whatever tracks we're featuring this week yeah or... well i just said that we're gonna take him to nepal okay and that's the place where we're going to go. I don't know if we, there we're should take be like you to macro such land. a light tone about that, but okay. What do you? We we don't even know what's going on. Yet. Now you, we're you obviously are you have trying no to are you trying to segue? No. Oh, don't segue yet. So man. the tracks we're featuring this week are they new? No. Oh, uh, we're not going to have new music for a while. We signed a bunch of new music though. Yeah, we need. Well, we need to like actually release it. You know. Well, yeah, we yeah. gotta get that. It's, I mean, because right now it's just kind of, of a kind of a thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's just the new music is currently probably, just probably get there. that figured out, shouldn't we? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a good idea. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, right, as for right now, we're basically just watching a lot of Arrow. Yeah, <laughs> and Flash. Uh, we featured DRVC this week again. I, I figured that, what, that, what that's the hell. which d- just the original, yeah, the original at the beginning and John Zeidman remix at that. So the John Zeidman remix has gotten quite a bit of a uh, good press. Mogwai featured it in one of his latest mixes. Yeah, uh, so it's been doing pretty well. Very cool. Shout out to our boy John Zeidman in Austin, Texas. Yeah, next time he comes back to El Paso, we should get him on the. You know, he's again. he's been a. Uh, so he pl- we played a bunch of shows together at South by Southwest, and he was talking about how much he wanted to come back on the podcast. He should. Man. All of our a lot of our artists have heard the podcast and they're interested in it. So yeah, we'll uh, look forward to some other guests. Uh, I think we may have uh, this is just a, a big maybe. We may have Raúl Chacon back next week. Okay, talking the, the Susio himself talking <laughs> about all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. Uh, is I he played... going to explain his, like, where, what has he been doing, the Susio? He's been throwing those shows. Uh-huh. He's been doing really well. He's now doing everything at those events. So I played one of his shows last night. And uh, this club is, like, really cool. But he's been he's the bartender. He, like, uh, coordinates all the music. He has, like, the lighting. and the, He does everything himself. Uh-huh. He even makes the Susio juice himself. Which well, for is... those of you who don't know, the Susio juice is Raul Chacon's signature drink. It's, it's his signature drink, which is it's really fucking good. It's uh, like, I want to try it now. It's, I'm it's actually surprisingly delicious. It's like dangerously delicious. Well, I mean, and with the name kind of gives it like a bad connotation. Like when I hear it's Susio a dollar juice, per drink, dude. For those of you who don't know, Susio means like dirty, yeah, filthy in, in Spanish. So filthy juice. I, I don't know. It doesn't have the same ring to it in English. It's a yeah, de- definitely not. But it has like it's a strawberry banana flavored drink. Yeah, and it's oh, okay. it literally tastes like fresh strawberries and bananas. Sounds bad, but it's yeah, it's. I mean, once you you drink one of those things, you're like, these are dangerous. Yeah. Like you could get really wasted drinking that stuff. So I don't know. Anyway, it was a good time last night. Thanks to anyone who came out, and uh, we're looking forward to next week. But let's go ahead and hop in and take these people to places that they've never been before. Some well, magical, some not so magical. Let's start off with uh, a little bit of world news. These earthquakey people. Uh, a terrible earthquake. Rocked in Nepal and neighboring countries. Uh, currently, over fifteen hundred people have been. No, it was you know, eighteen fun. eighteen hundred people oh, was the last count I read. Well, it's gone up since like a couple hours ago. Then, it's t- it's really terrible, man. And uh, I don't know if you heard, but the, it it also caused an avalanche on uh, Mount Everest. Uh, yeah, I did hear about that actually. So a bunch of stuff has been uh, like the place is basically in disarray right now. Yeah. That oh. sucks, man. My my heart goes out to those people. Uh, in Chile, there's also been an eruption, a volcanic eruption. So, planet planet Earth is going crazy right now. Um, real quick, if you want to help out with what's going on in Nepal, your best bet is probably going through through UNICEF right now. Is American Red Cross not doing anything? I, I'm not sure if they are, but I know that UNICEF is uh, responsible for helping a lot of the children who have been displaced because of this. I think it's up, they said upwards of like six or seven thousand people have nowhere to live right now. So they, I mean, there there's a, a huge number of people injured too. Yeah, like a massive, massive number of people injured. Uh, these three like tent towns, like makeshift towns, have popped up where people are living, and you know the tensions are obviously high. But uh, like you said, our hearts go out to them, and if you want to help out, go through UNICEF right now. That's your best bet. So, uh, 
Yeah, there's also that that volcanic eruption in Chile, though. Did you see that? Yeah, so... I don't know if that's really damaged very... Has that damaged a lot of things? Well, luckily, uh, with, you know, the technology in today's day and age, uh, everyone who was in an unsafe proximity to it has been evacuated. So not one death. Uh, No, I'm pretty sure there's been no deaths, but... It's it's really magnificent the scale of this volcano. It it's this is a huge eruption. They say it's uh, the most deadly volcano in that region. So like South America and most of that region, it is the most deadly volcano. There it's is. it's one of the most notable eruptions since like Mount Saint Saint Helens or whatever. Yeah, uh, a lot of the volcanic ash the the plumes were so huge that it was uh, creating electrical storms within the volcano yeah that was beautiful i saw the photos it it is really something to see uh let's take a look at this which is where'd it go i mean even just looking at this one like short clip and also if you guys want to follow along with what we're watching just go to youtube.com slash macro records tv a huge mushroom shaped cloud of ash up into the sky there was lightning multicolored wow really cinematic pictures for those looking at them around the globe but terrifying for the people on the ground many families rushed to gas stations filling up their tanks trying to get as far as possible from the volcano they stocked up on food and water officials have evacuated around 4,400 people they've set up an exclusion zone trying to keep people safe Luckily, no one was hurt. One hiker who was initially reported missing turned out he sought shelter in a forest until he could get out of there. He's safe. Uh, Now the big problem is the ash. It's been blanketing the entire region in some areas. It's 60 centimeters thick, or about 23 inches, and huge clouds are headed over the Andes into Argentina. The uh, flights into Bariloche have been canceled. And now we're hearing that another eruption could be on its way. This is the first time we've had a major eruption in more than 50 years, and we haven't had any volcanic activity in Calbuco since 1972. But the National Geological Service says it appears a second crater inside the volcano is opening up, which could lead to an even bigger eruption. That means more ash, which is already affecting the health, the agriculture, the airports in the region, and possibly more lava, which is important, because if that lava starts to melt the uh, snow on the mountaintops, we could even see flooding. All of this keeping Chile on high alert. Shasta Arlington, CNN. That's pretty crazy. That is nuts, man. Uh, here, there's one more thing. But thank goodness nobody's been hurt. Uh, this is the view of the volcano. From the International Space Station. Yeah, right? this is nuts, man. This is what it looks like if you're orbiting the Earth in the International Space Station. What if they were like they saw the cloud even coming for them? Well, the, uh, uh, in space, <laughs> people have posed the question: like is, parallax? <laughs> is some of that volcanic ash going to actually break through the atmosphere and make it into space? And the answer is probably not. No, yeah, yeah. that's really doubtful. But uh, that that's really insane, man. It, yeah, it's not so. I'm glad that everyone was proactive enough to keep people safe, though, and they like you know, yeah, in Chile especially. They so other stuff together. Anyway, so we're jumping into some movies now. Some movies, most definitely. Nice. Um, so did you see? You saw? We showed the teaser for the new Fantastic Four, right? Where it was like yes. 30, twenty seconds or something. I like, was not <laughs> excited. Well, I, I I don't blame you because that teaser from before really didn't show much. It it practically showed nothing. <laughs> okay. Well, let's. Uh, we have a full on trailer now, and let's it, give it a look. It looks really good. It's about as long as the teaser. Six years and millions of dollars, and you gave us nothing. What's different now? So, but Doctor, that, who's Doctor Doom? Uh, I don't know who's playing him, but you'll you'll he's like see. A hacker. He's or a, a hacker. Yeah, he's but, like a hacker. But he looks good, man. You'll see him. S O O. And you know that was uh, uh, what's his name from House of Cards. I don't take orders well. Yeah, totally. That's Freddy. Yeah, Freddy. Well, if I do, I know who to call. The muscle. So he's the thing? He, uh, he's Ben Grimm. What you've created here is incredible. Kate Mara, also from House of Cards. It's funny. You guys sure you're in the best shape? She's hot. Yeah. And he's, he's Johnny Storm. Yeah. Who's that, Nick Cannon? No. just cracked into dimensional travel. Not sure how, like, what... <laughs> Oh, 
kind of all a little bit young, I feel. All I want to know is where are my children? Were they all his children or something? No, just just uh, Sue and Johnny. I thought they were dating. What? Weren't, so aren't they supposed to be dating? No, they're like, brother or, and sister, dude. Really? Yeah. Mr. Fantastic and Sue and Johnny Storm. Oh, Johnny. Jo- oh, okay. Sue Storm and Johnny Storm. But so Mr. Fantastic is her husband, though. I don't know if it's like that yet. Thing looks awesome, man. Did you see him? Yeah, I saw him from behind. Honestly, Dr. this looks Dude. leaps and bounds better than the one with uh, <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> Jessica, Jessica Alba and whatnot. Dr. Doom. One of my favorite Marvel villains. Victor Von Doom. Until he's in two minutes. <laughs> what happens when you drop the thing out of a plane no that's not what that, obviously not even in context they had like what, what's his name the fucking human torch blow some truck up and it makes it seem like the thing like le- leapt onto the truck and man yeah. i gotta They're clearly say, though, in two different locations i gotta say man from from what we've seen in this movie it looks pretty good the, well the tra- now the trailer looks good the teaser looked awful the, well yeah and i agree with you on that the teaser didn't show enough but this this showed me enough to to get a little bit excited about this movie, that's for sure. I certainly hope that's the case with the other thing that we were talking about earlier. Oh, we'll we'll get to that shortly. Uh, real quick, we're not going to talk about this too much, just to let you know that we're going to see Age of Ultron, Friday, May 1st. Hashtag, it's all connected. It really is. We just connected everything. <laughs> Connecting and, the dots, man, uh, left and right. What is the actor's name that played Daredevil? Uh, Charlie Cox. Is Yeah, so he's... Uh, he has confirmed that he signed a, and, or it was a stipulation in the contract that if they want him to be in the movies, he has to be in the movies. Which is awesome. I think that's a good thing. And I, yeah. like, some people have said that that you know that could also be a bad thing for Marvel, but uh, you know because DC has so many ways of fixing problems, I guess. But I like the idea that that's, everything's connected. It, that's the one, the best thing. It's it's not the one best the one good thing, but it is by far one of the best things that this whole universe they're building. I, you know, going for it. I honestly feel like it should be the other way around too. Like I feel like DC would have done well to do that because they have way better continuity than Marvel has. Yeah, you know, and they. I mean, even the stuff that they've retconned just kind of makes like I don't know. It makes more sense. Like, uh, well, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit, but uh, I mean, they have the Arrowverse, right? Those two shows are connected, and they're gonna be adding a third, which we'll be talking about I don't very know about shortly. That. Um, but yeah, that. so this Tuesday, the the newest episode of Agents of Shield is going to be connected. Agents of Shield to, to, to Age of Ultron, which me and Trent are going to see on Friday. Uh, pre-ordered already. Reserve seating too. We don't have to. Like, Friday is the first. Yeah, mm. we don't have to fight anybody. Like we just, you know, reserve seating. You can't take our fucking seats. You know? Oh, you already got a seats. Yeah. Are we sitting next to each other? Yeah. Yes, dude. Yes. Uh, As opposed to, all right, you're all the way over there. <laughs> that would be take funny. your notes. I'm going to take notes when I, when I watch it too. Um, we'll we'll be talking about it next week. So, I'm going to take extensive notes on this on this during, movie. How are you going to take notes during the movie? Just like I did when I watched Cinderella, uh, uh, and with my phone like on low low brightness and just like in between my you legs. Can't remember like. No, I think because I I don't know. There's just like certain things that I like to pinpoint. Small things. It's gonna be a long movie too, isn't it? It's like over two hours long. I'm sure. I'm sure it's close to two and a half hours. There's no way. I mean, for such like an epic movie, they can't just make it an hour and a half. Yeah. It's got to be a little bit. It's probably gonna be like around the same length as like Fast or Furious Seven. Well, the original Avengers was about two and a half hours too. Yeah. Well, I mean, and this one's gonna be way more epic. Yeah. We've got more characters. Definitely. We've got Ultra. Ultric, uh, ult, Ultric Ultron. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I told Trent, I was like, I, uh, yeah, pre-order tickets for Age of Ultron. And you're like, is that a movie about some guy named Ultron who just gets old? <laughs> He's like aging. <laughs> He's aging. Yeah, totally, Gross. dude. So funny. I'm, I've been like thinking about, uh, you know, different premises for movies that currently exist. And, yeah. Yeah. So, Spider-Man. There's one thing that Marvel, or that, excuse me, that DC does really, really well. 
animated features. Yeah, totally. Like, they kill it. They kick ass with animated features. And I, I, I think it's it's good that Marvel recognized that because they're going to try and make more animated stuff too. And us as the fans, we can only win in this situation, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, more content for us equals winning. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope that... I mean, the, the reason that DC wins with the animated features, though, or as for right now at least, is because they make them like with really good storylines, and they're not just meant for kids. Like they're meant for any general audiences to watch, and if they if Marvel takes that approach or the, or the approach that they've done so far with their animated features and makes them like just targeted towards kids, I think that they're still going to be on the bottom end. And you know, what I want to watch think, something man? that I'm going to enjoy, man. Like, I totally you know? think that's the one. If if the DC cinematic universe was akin to that of its animated universe, and they were trying to tell stories the same way they do. I think DC would be rolling in it right now, you know? Well, I mean, DC, with all fairness, they haven't had the chance yet. Yeah. Like, we have... They're, they're trying to build something like that, and hopefully they don't stick to the whole, like, Nolan idea of, of everything has to be dark. Like, you know, or everything Superman has is not... To, or everything has to be different, you right. know? Because, oh, they think, oh, if it's not different from the source material, what's the fucking point, you That's know? That's dumb. And I, I don't agree with that. Uh, but real quick, let's get back on topic. Uh, Marvel is producing an animated Spider-Man movie. And I was like, when I heard that, okay, that's cool. But when I heard that it's Phil Lord and Chris Miller who are going to be working on it, that got me really, really excited. Uh, They're the guys behind the Lego movie, uh, 21 Jump Street, 22 Jump Street. So I think it's safe to say that it's going to have the right comedic tone, hopefully, for a Spider-Man, you know? They made a move, another movie recently that was not very good. Really? Yeah, and it was. I think it was more along the lines of it was like a superhero movie or something like that, yeah. and I was like not into it. What was it? Because well, they made the the Lego movie, and that yeah. was a success. Twenty One Jump Street, that total was success. What was? I don't know. They, or, hold up, bear with me. Let's see. Oh no 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 no! What are you doing over there? No 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 no. No, no, no. The no, last no. movie they worked on was The Last Man on Earth. What are their names again? Phil Lord and Chris Taylor. Or Chris Miller, excuse me. Uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, too. They work on, or he's worked on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Maybe I'm thinking of something else, then. 17 episodes of How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> um, um... Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know what? Actually, I might be thinking of something else. I think you are. But I enjoyed yeah. the Lego movie. Yeah, and I enjoyed both 21 and 22 Jump Street. Yeah. Uh, granted, that doesn't really play into what they're going to do with a Spider-Man animated feature. I mean, feature, it kind of does. Spider-Man's like really catchphrasy. And yeah. He's, he, it's lighthearted, you know? So I think that was my problem with uh, both Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Like, neither of them are very funny actors. and And Peter Parker's kind of like... It is a funny role, you know? Kind of. I mean, Spider-Man's always, like, he's always, like, talking trash to the villains. Yeah. You know, which I kind of like. He's, like... I think that's why, you know, uh, a lot of people think that the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, the, the first film they did, was the best. But when, when, what I liked about the ones with Andrew Garfield was he at least had some of that, you know? I feel like they had it in the first... Uh... The first one with Sam Raimi. I don't know, but the thing is with that, it was the first, like, real superhero movie since, like, Batman had, like, destroyed everything, you know? That was, like, people were like, oh, my God, like, we're into superheroes again. Yeah. You know, people were like, this is cool. So it kind of changed our mentality, I feel. Yeah, Um, totally. You know, they haven't done Spider-Man justice on the silver screen, though, yet, in my opinion. Me neither. I I definitely don't think they have. Spider-Man is by, by and, well... I, I, as far as like the Marvel camp goes, I really love Spider Man. I love X Men. Um, I even like Fantastic Four. You know, yeah. But I'm just like not a huge Iron Man fan. Neither am I, man. Nor am I a huge like Hawkeye, Black Widow fan. I like the Hulk, but I, I like like Planet Hulk. I think and we they, haven't seen the Hulk like go all out yet. Thor th- is cool too. I think they did fans like you kind of a disservice by making 
Iron Man, the head of the Avengers, when, yeah. when Hank Pym is totally missing from the picture, you know? Iron Man is a fucking dick. Like, when you think about it, <laughs> he like... He is an egotistical even, dude, dick. Dude, in the comics, he crushed Hank Pym. Yeah. Like, he stepped on him just for shits and giggles. He was an alcoholic for a period of time. One well, in the comics... And he beat his girlfriend. I mean, he's not the whole reason that the Civil War starts, but it's because of him, you he's know? one of the reasons, yeah. Yeah, he, he thinks all the superheroes need to be unmasked like him, you know? And, and vulnerable. I, I, yeah, I don't. There's no. There's seriously no likable qualities for for <laughs> Tony Stark for me. I, mean, I think I think Robert, Robert Downey, Downey Jr. Yeah, that's not Tony Stark. That's Robert Downey Jr. as Tony and, Stark, and he's the best part about it. Yeah, hands totally, down, totally. Yeah. He, it's his own thing though. He's made it his own thing, and once he's gone, I think we're gonna see like. Whoever are, the next Iron Man is, that sounds scary. Man. Well, and then it's going to be like, what? how are they going to do that? They're going to be like, well, this is still Iron Man, still the same Iron Man. Still the same, like, continuity. Yeah, from the but, other... but it's just a different actor. Yeah. Like, that's weird. They're going to, it's going to end up happening, man. It's going to end up, uh, just look at X-Men. Like, they're slowly, uh, with the new X-Men movie, they're going to be slowly phasing out a bunch of the old actors, you know? Which, I... I it's Honest- gonna be like a Dario Naharis kind of thing. But honestly, these people can't play these characters right. indefinitely. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think I think that DC is planning to have like whoever they're choosing, they're going to have them for like the next decade doing yeah. the roles. Well, and Robert Downey Jr. has been playing Iron Man for a decade. Like, how much longer is he gonna be doing? this? I mean, like, know? really, but I, he makes insane amounts of money doing that. And really, when it comes down to it, is like, well, I want to be an artist again, or I want to do like you know. Or he has like maybe he has like some sort of stipulation in his he can't contract. Work on art films, man. The 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 insurance money required to have Robert Downey Jr. on your it's film. way too high. Yeah, he has to be in big budget Hollywood movies. I mean, he should have he should just be smart and stick with it because I mean you know yeah he'll get older but in Hollywood do people really ever get that much older? Yeah. Like by the time he's like seventy, it's gonna be like yeah you can't play it anymore. <laughs> like you're yeah. done, dude. But yeah, if he totally. if he stays in like tip top shape, I mean he could play it for another ten years for sure. Okay, yeah. You know, I, could, I they mean, could dye his hair. He, I'm not could, he still to that. looks good, you know. I don't know. I'm not I'm not against it, but also it's like we brought this up in one of the past episodes or Jay Oliva brought it up actually when he was talking about uh Marvel uh how, what's going to happen when you know, they've already done all of the major Marvel stories and like the way that they've been uh, I guess orchestrating the whole Marvel like cinematic universe is there's a larger threat and a larger threat and a larger threat. So there's Ultron and then there's going to be like you know uh, the, the heroes versus each other, so that like threatens the entire world or whatever. And uh, there's a lot of of Marvel content that hasn't even been grazed, you know. And uh, but that, then we're gonna see Thanos, and after Thanos is defeated, then what? Well, I mean, dude, the Kree, the Scrolls, we have yet to see a scroll. Like, and the, for if you don't know, the scroll and the Scrolls and the Kree have been at war for centuries. But is this something that people really care about? Dude, Super Scroll is fucking badass. I think if you understood the the true magnitude of it, you'd you'd probably be excited about it too. Well, you know what? There's we haven't seen. I think it'll be a lot better once we get the X Men into the mix too. But like, we need to see like Galactus, yeah. you know, and like the Living Tribunal, and the, like that. That's another big thing. Like he's the Devourer of Worlds. Yeah, you know, so that would be an interesting uh, take. But I mean, I don't know. I I just feel like. You know, you know how I feel. Yeah. So, anyway, I, I was going to mention this earlier while we're still talking about superheroes. Uh, they brought this up as far as like the DC universe goes, but uh, did you see the color corrected version of Superman? Yeah. Or of Man of Steel? Uh-huh. How much better it looks? Did you think it looked better? Or- I mean, I think that Superman should have blue skies and like you know, I mean that's Superman. Yeah. Batman and Superman don't live in the same place, and that's yeah. what Arrow and Flash have kind of gotten right. They've totally made. Uh- Superman a little too gritty. Yeah. But, you know... Maybe it'll change in this movie, though, this next movie. I feel I feel like even in... Superman himself, before he meets the Justice League, was a little bit, you know, gritty and rough around the edges, you know? Depends on which, on which like, st- Superman we're talking about, but yeah. Yeah. Kind of. I, I, I kind of agree with you. I, I don't know. I, I think that he was never dark like Batman dark. N- never, though. never. And I, it would be cool to see, like, that kind of Batman grittiness, as far as the coloring goes, applied to Batman when he's on screen. But with Superman, it doesn't need to be like that. When they're both on screen together, that's something that they'd have to figure out. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, it would probably be darker. 
you well, know. obviously. But, I mean, just those images we've seen of Ben Affleck as Batman are kind of dark and, you can know, you bleed? a little scary. <laughs> Do you bleed? <laughs> not, not just, I'm talking about the frame before that, when you see him, like, skulking around somewhere, and it, it What if he's know, like, he can't, he can't ask Wonder Woman that question, obviously. Do you bleed? She's like, five days a month. Oh, Ew! Oh, God! <laughs> no Wonder Woman! I don't know, does that happen in Themyscarans? Of course. Are you sure? I'm positive. I'm okay. sure it does. They probably like take care of it in a weird way. I mean, they're pretty much demi. They're, they're like, like we slash you know? our bellies to like. I don't know. Like, holy shit! All right, we are warrior let's women. Move the fuck away from this. We are war. They probably use like those Cherokee hair tampons from South no. Park. No. Did you ever? You remember that? That yeah. was like from the first se- or second season of South Park. I I kind of miss when South Park used to do like the live action things. What do you mean? That was like a, a live action part of South Park. It was like Cherokee hair tampons. I don't rem- I don't know what you're talking. How was it live action? They had like live action like real people, like Cherokees, like yeah. In one part, it was just like a short, a short I like don't remember that fifteen second like bit or whatever. It was, it was like funny. I don't know. Okay, let's talk about this. Uh, the guys from Broken Lizard, they made it. They had a- <laughs> they had a Kickstarter to make the s- sequel to Super Troopers, and their goal was five million, but they raised four point four million. And well, their goal, their main goal was to like, if, if they made over $1 million, they were going to make the movie. Yeah. But now they were like, if we, if we get to that point, then we're going to make a really good movie and like get as many cool people as we can. I think the goal for 4.5 million was to have real bears or something. <laughs> uh, I don't have, I think they're going to have Kate Upton. Do you remember like the first goal. Super Troopers? Yeah. Uh, Did you see the preview fucker? where they were like talking about, yeah, Bear Fucker was awesome. <laughs> That's why they were like, we're 4.5 million, we're going to have real live bears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they locked Farva in the trunk yeah. for the Kickstarter. Uh-huh. And they said, if you want to get Farva, if Farva will never get out if we don't make the, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. the proper amount of money or whatever. But I don't know. I think that this is going to be, I like how Farva's in the dark right there. Yeah. This is it's going to be a good movie, I think. Yeah, hell yeah. They got to give these guys a chance. And someone mentioned uh, on Reddit they were talking about how they didn't understand why these guys needed to do a Kickstarter because, well, they're Hollywood guys and like, you know, why don't they just go to the studios to make money? But when you look at their success rate with their films, it's like significantly low. Yeah. So hopefully this will be a movie where they make a good amount of money because they've never had that before. And let's Super not, Troopers let's was not, a moderate success. Let's not kid each other. These guys aren't fucking, you they're, know, they're George not, Clooney successful dude, or they, wealthy. These guys you know? aren't even wealthy. Yeah. Like, they're not even wealthy. The, the last few movies, the last movie that they did was Slam and Salmon, and it wasn't even a success. I did not like it. It didn't even make it to theaters. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I have like their la- like the last movie beer I loved of theirs was Beer Fest. Yeah, and Beer Fest only made like three million dollars. Yeah, their budget for Beer Fest was like fifteen million, and they made eighteen, I think. Yeah, that's so crazy. that's that's yeah, it sucks. And that was a movie that I I think I even saw that in theaters. I love that movie. I love it too. It's I, ha- great. I own it on DVD. I watch it. So hopefully these guys are like going to go all out, and you know they're like, okay, well we know that this is something that we need to do, and th- yeah. they're going to bring like they're going to make it raunchy and really bring it and. Yeah. I don't know. I'm excited for it. That's I love right. Super Troopers. That's what introduced me to the whole Broken Lizard clan. Yeah. I even enjoyed Club Dread, despite all of its flaws. Club Dread is definitely... It's one of my least favorites, but it's, it's like... It's like the I campiest it ab- of all of them. I put it above Slam and Salmon, though. Oh, yeah. Easily. And uh, they had some other one, too, that I never even watched. It was like their very first movie. Oh, really? Yeah, Super wow. Troopers wasn't their first one, but it was like their second one. Yeah. But anyway, I'm... I, I wish these guys the best. Jay, Ch- uh, Jay Chandra Kazar is he's directed Community, and he was actually in the most recent episode, or yeah, I think not the most recent, but one of the last episodes of Community. Oh really? Yeah, he's directed a bunch of other stuff. Oh lord, back to DC Comics then. Well, you know what I had planned was for us to talk Marvel, and then to split it with the Super Trooper story, and then go to DC. But yeah, but inevitably. Well, we always talk about both. It's <laughs> yeah. you can't talk about one without talking about the other. So you guys have most likely heard about this already. David Ayer uh, posted a picture to Twitter of the Joker's new look for Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. We hate it. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't stand it. I have no. My, my biggest problem with it, and I'm sure other people's problem with it, is the tattoos. Uh, the Joker is not a tattoo guy. I mean, we've established this. One thing me and Trent were talking about is, uh, you know, tattoos like that 
would totally be something that you would see on one of the Joker's thugs. Or yeah, or a fan of the Joker, but exactly. he would never. I just can't imagine him sitting next to like a tattoo artist and chatting him up while he's getting the tattoos or whatever. Yeah. I and also, you know, I mean, let's talk about one thing they did right. I think the hair is cool. The hair is cool. It, it's a little, a little too neon though, man. But you know, it has to be. I think it has to be that color so that they can color correct it in post. Oh, okay. But uh, so I don't have a problem with that. Not yet, at least. Let's talk about another thing they did wrong. The uh, purple surgical glove. What? What's wrong with that? I mean, that doesn't bother me. Would the Don't. Joker ever really wear, like, maybe, there's a couple of storylines where maybe I could see that happening, but if the Joker's wearing surgical gloves at, at like, as a I mean, the Joker's thing, done weird things. Like, haven't you seen him as Joe, where he's, like, an electrician? Yeah. <laughs> but, but, dude, okay, wait. And he, I've also seen him play a woman, too. Yeah. But, uh, there's... I just don't – okay, the tattoos, they don't work for me. The the metal teeth doesn't work for me. Like, the Joker the should have, like, yellow teeth. Yeah. The expression is, like – he doesn't even look crazy. He just it looks, looks like, like the next cover to Home Alone, as we saw <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or Or he looks like – I mean, it looks very, like, rock and roll. Marilyn Manson and, is the name we've heard a Yeah, lot. Marilyn Manson. ICP is another thing that we've heard. And that's, like, not the Joker. The Joker is refined, classy psychopath. And but see that he wears that, spats to a street fight. That's what someone said. Like the guy is the definition of class, yeah. but as a psychopath. You yeah, know? and and I think what most people don't realize is the Joker is fucking diabolical. Like he uh, he wouldn't sit through uh, like these tattoos just so people could know that he's diabolical. He just is. You know, his intentions never have to be like displayed like that. His intentions are always very clear in what he's trying to do. And like, they're you know, always just him. And he's he's a classic narcissist, like we've heard before. And everything that he does is for him, you know? Yeah. It's, it's not for others. The it's not d- even for Harley. He always pushes Harley to, like, you know? He uses her all the time, man. I, that, if, if only that. I think his only real love... He loves Batman. I think he does love... Uh, like, somewhere down there, he has feelings, feelings for, for Harley. Harley yeah. But... He would throw those feelings away in an instant if it meant getting whatever he wanted. You yeah, know? totally. Yeah. He, uh, but he, so Harley, but Harley loves him too. Well, I she, mean, she falls in love with him. She's man. totally crazy about him. But we, yeah. so we saw in the uh, assault on Arkham, like he gets kind of like, doesn't the Joker kind of get like a little bit jealous? Well, okay. The thing is at that point in that story, Harley realized that the Joker's always just using her. You she know? doesn't care, though. She, at, but, at the very end, she doesn't care. Yeah, because she's got... Oh, like, Mr. J. She's I'll got put feelings in. for him, but that like she realizes from time to time that he's using her. That's why she shacks up with Deadshot, you know? Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> But she she still goes back to the Joker. Ah, oh, put in. Well, and like, and you know. time and time again, she's given up the Joker to Batman. You know? Yeah. I I mean, she she's not afraid to give him up. But I mean, time and time again, the Joker's beat the shit out of Harley too. Yeah. Like beat the shit out of her. I mean, would you expect anything other than a re- abusive relationship between those two? <laughs> I, and it's not even like when you watch a uh, Batman the animated series, like it's their relationship really isn't even that sexual all the time. Like she like wants to like cozy up to him or whatever, and he's just like, I'm working on my plans. Like you know yeah. what I'm saying? But I I've never seen the Joker. Uh, if they're trying like really hard for originality, they don't. We just like you said. I would appreciate a Joker that's just true to the source material. Well, and uh, I mean, I would appreciate if they took if they took that Arkham Assault on Arkham storyline and made it exactly like that into live action with you know actors that they could make look like the characters in the animated version. I feel they would get a lot better product than whatever the fuck they're going for. I agree, here. too. But, you know, it's funny because even – I don't remember which storyline it was, but even the Joker was talking about – he's like, oh, that guy, I did it with more class than him. Like, you know, oh, it was, he was talking about the Red Hood. That he's was, like, it was in Under the Red Hood. Yeah, yeah. and he's like, he's like, I used to do it real classy. Like, yeah. like you know, and he's like, mine, mine had some real flair. And he's like, this new guy's just all all bangs, and you know, I mean. Yeah. But the Joker's even in that storyline, he's not to be trusted. Like he fucking fucks over Black Mask. Yeah. Like puts him in a in a truck and tries to like light him on fire and shit. I mean, he's he, he fucks over everyone, man. Like, but what he's what is he wearing while he does that? Is he like shirtless with like ha ha ha? Like you know, what I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like it, he doesn't. His intentions don't need to be displayed on his skin. He's going to do whatever he wants to do. What he's wearing really, really doesn't matter. I mean. Like I mentioned this earlier uh, in the Nolan verse, when he, when he's like he's got nothing in his pockets but lo- knives and lint, like that. He's still classy as shit though. He's wearing like yeah, a three piece yeah. suit. Yeah, totally. And it's but it's 
It's a that's a classic Joker look, and I, I like that look that Ledger had. I it's, really it's did. not even that class. I mean, his like he brought his own thing to it because he had like the longer hair. He looked all mangy, but he has like he has a suit on still. Yeah, you know, he still looks proper. He doesn't. I mean, who knows if he even has tattoos? Because we don't need to see the Joker with his shirt off. Yeah, it's just unnecessary. And the one thing that Ledger did that was totally you know, not really from source material anywhere was, you, you want to know how I got these scars. Like, that that was Ledger's thing, you know? And, and he, he came up with a different story each time. Yeah. So you never really knew. Yeah. I liked that. I would like to see, like, a more... I, it would be cool... Like, I like the Joker with the scars, actually. Like, a, like not, I like face-burned-off Joker. Like, you know? I like it, too. <laughs> but, I mean, like, there should be, like, some, some like, slight scarring. It could be, like, clean scarring, even. Like, yeah. you know, the makeup, I like that. It doesn't have to be, like, Ledger with the nasty makeup. It could be proper makeup. But, like, it doesn't, like, why do we need... We watched this stupid video uh, where it's the Joker sitting in a tattoo parlor talking to... He's like, yeah, because I'm damaged. I'm real screwed up. I want you know everyone, what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? I'm just I'm I screwed messed up. up. I'm messed up, man. I'm real messed up. And I don't know. I recommend that you watch that. Just look up Joker tattoos, and it's a video. It's a cartoon. I, f- I forgot who it's by, but it's hilarious. I mean, so why do you need damaged on your forehead? This <laughs> image, which is a leaked set photo, I don't see the damaged on his forehead, and I don't, yeah. I don't see the tattoos, so I'm not bothered by this at all. <laughs> I, I sent you another photo as well that has no uh, tattoos did I either. Get it? So I sent it to you uh, via Facebook. Uh, let me see. But uh, this is th- there is some straight up like CSI level zoom in this photo that I sent to Alex, and uh, it's like I guess paparazzi took a photo of Jared Leto and someone looking at the the actual like the source material on an iPhone. Oh really? Yeah. Is that what that was? Look at it. Let me see. Okay, I'm pull, going. Pull it up. Pulling it up. Pull it up, Agent Madsen. All right, here we go. Pull here it. Here we go. Here we go. Dude, this is some CSI level zoom right here. <laughs> on, on the left? Do you see? No, no, no. Uh, so look on the right. Oh, top, on the top, oh, top the, right. where they're looking at it, and look at how far it's zoomed in right there. Yeah. But you can clearly see there's no like tattoos right there. I kind of like that look too. He's got like the suit on. It's a white suit, you know. Honestly, he now he's wearing like. Uh, the Joker has worn a hat like that before too. I feel like he if he was that ty- like. Uh, have you seen the alternate version of the Joker in Injustice where he's he's not wearing a hat like that, I guess, but it's like a straw hat, and mm-hmm. he's wearing a Hawaiian shirt and yeah. like pur- oh, yeah. purple shorts. and like but that, They also did that in the a- Batman the Animated Series. Like the That's Joker's, a totally awesome look. I like, I like when the Joker's like whimsical because there yeah. are some moments when he's like hilarious. He really is funny, but then there's like sick, he's sick and twisted too. Well, th- that's the thing. We talked about his, mer- his multiple personalities. He's funny, but when, whenever it gets down to it, you'll realize just how crazy and diabolical this guy truly is. But he's, uh, so Batman has even said this a few times. Batman says like, some, like a lot of the fucked up shit that the Joker does, he thinks it's hilarious. Yeah. And it's just part of his like sick, twisted joke. But some of the things that he does it's really all are him. kind of it's, funny. It's, ooh, it's all self-serving. Yeah. Really. To- well, I mean, and it's a lot. Some of the stuff he does, it's not even to like prove a point. Yeah, it's just to be crazy. You know, he doesn't. And that's a good thing about, uh, or I guess it was a story arc for uh, Nolan's Joker and or Ledger's Joker, where he he steals all that money just to burn it. You know, he doesn't yeah. he doesn't give a damn about the money. Uh huh. Yeah, wants I know to, what you're talking about. I mean, the Joker is kind of. He is kind of an anarchist, like like Ledger's Joker. I mean, but he's more than that too. Ledger captured one specific part of the Joker that was really good, and he got some of like the whims the whimsical part. But I really like Mark Hamill's Joker. I mean, I like the the Joker from fucking the video games, you know, from the yeah. Batman video games. No, yeah, me too. I wish that we had some of that. Anyway, uh, on to some. Oh, this is what I was talking about. So this is a, a screenshot or a photo from. I guess it's a photo from the set of. The ne- this week's episode of Flash, uh huh, and on the screen we got Flash, uh, Black Arrow. Is, is that what they're calling him? No, I just, I mean, he's he's not he's not Green Arrow right now. He's he's, but the name that Ra's al Ghul gave him is Arrow. Also him. Also him. Yeah. Uh, and Firestorm on the right. Basically, what they're just the reason we're even looking at this is because there's going to be a spinoff. Of, oh really? Of Flash and Arrow. Oh yeah, you told me about this. It's earlier. Gonna, I'm pretty sure it's going to contain Firestorm. And the Atom. That'll be cool. And uh, it has a name. It's not a name anyone was expecting, but I like it. It's called Legends of Tomorrow. 
And I'm it, down with it. It's it's also going to be on the CW. I'm guessing. I'm pretty sure because Hopefully. it's, it's going to be a part of the the entire Arrowverse. Cool. Yeah, I'm down with that. And maybe they'll even introduce some more heroes. I hope they do. Who knows? Uh, what isn't that? Weren't they doing like an eight part animated miniseries with like Vixen and some other shit? Too? Yeah, that was supposed to happen. That I was supposed to be like a CW to thing. Too. I think it's still going to happen. That that'll be know. cool too. That's and it's for adults. It's like an eight. It's basically like this, but. I mean, this is for all audiences. Anything on the CW is like not going to be just for like adults, but yeah, it's it's not a child's cartoon. Definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like something that you would see like Phineas and Ferb, or, <laughs> you know. And yeah. I mean, I think that su- that superheroes in general have kind of moved away from that. But I, some of the Marvel stuff is still kind of on that that end. It's kind of got like weaker story plots, like easier for a younger person to follow. Uh, Avengers Assemble. I watched all of the first, uh, I guess, our first two seasons of that or something like that. And I was is just that not, good? No. I, I see. The thing is, I see that on Netflix, and I know it's not going to be good. You should so give it I a shot. It. <laughs> give it a shot, so you know what I'm talking about. But don't, don't they what, have Ultimate Spider-Man on there too? Have you watched that? No. Is it Miles Morales? I, it might be. Uh, yeah, probably, I oh, guess. Uh, but uh, one of the things I remember from Avengers Assemble is Tony Stark always going, Avengers Assemble! I oh, like, God. I was like, this is so fucking unnecessary. <laughs> that's totally for kids, though. Yeah. it's a That's a really, really kid. I mean, I, like, thing. even even in Justice League, or what is it? Not Justice League Go, uh... Teen, Teen Titans, Titans go. go, yeah, and Teen Titans go. Uh, he Robin says like Teen Titans go a few times, yeah. but he doesn't even he doesn't overdo it. And that show is like based on it, that show is pretty outlandish. Like it's some, there's some funny shit that goes the, on. I feel like that show is is less grounded than uh, Avengers Assemble, so it could easily get away with that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. The, but so, okay, so I showed you a, a screenshot from Teen Titans Go, and it was like. Jason Todd's ashes right there and with the crowbar. The crowbar that Joker used to kill him right next Some to Some really, I mean, it's... And Dead Man's skeleton was yeah. under uh, Starfire's, Starfire's bed, bed with a glass of water that she keeps refilling, I guess. I don't understand. What is Dead Man doing <laughs> under Starfire's bed? But see, that, that's just like clear... It, it makes it clear that that show is still made for the fans too. Yeah, most like definitely. even if you're if you're an adult or a kid, you can watch that. And, and I mean, Cyborg is so punny in that show. I, when I watch that show, I'm not expecting some fucking action-packed, uh, yeah, proper that's DC not what it story. Is. I it, I like it because it's fun. You they know? bring in like Trigon, and he's like ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, it's like a, it's a bring your your parents to the thing day or whatever. It's or fun, man. And uh, so now they're having Rav. Uh, what's her name? Ravager. It's Deathstroke's daughter. I think Deathstroke has a daughter. I, I know he has a son. I didn't know he had a daughter. Dude, she like she like plucked her eye out to be more like daddy. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. Well, in the whole new 52 run of Deathstroke, it's about him and his son. They, they never even mention his daughter. He He's always disappointed in his son because he's never as, he's never as good as dad. His daughter is Rose Wilson. Huh. Yeah, she's, and she looks just like, When uh, was her first appearance, does it say? Uh, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. I'm Ravager, it's... yeah. Nice. She's what? she's badass. She actually pulled her eye out. First appearance? I, where would you find that? It, it's got to be right under there, man. Whatever you're looking at. I'm looking at history edit. What? New Ravager. This, this what? is like this is like their storyline. Oh man. I I can't find it. She's in Blackest Night. Really? Okay. So that's the thing. I guess she she's was there. She's 156 appearances in New Earth. I don't know. It's I wish that I could. She's been in Teen Titans. Her first appearance, maybe a Teen Titans was in uh, New Teen Titans Volume volume One, one, Number One, November nineteen eighty. Yep. So she's been around for quite some time. She also appeared in the modern run of Batman in Batman Number Four Forty, October nineteen eighty nine. Yeah. Anyway, she's going to show up in Teen Titans Go if that hasn't already happened. And some people were saying like, "Wow, that's a really dark character to have in that show." Wait, wait. Her alter ego is Isabel Rochev. No, Isabel Roche, maybe, but... That's it- what it says. Alter Ego. Uh, Grant Wilson, Bill Walsh, Wade Defarge, Rose Wilson Worth, and Isabel Rocha. How, is how, how does she have, like, male al- alter egos? I don't know. Team affiliations, Grant and Walsh. I don't know what that is. But Isabel Roshev is also... Uh, she's the the Red Queen or whatever. Yeah. Uh, she ha- She has affiliations with Hive and Black Lantern Corps. Supporting character of Two Face. Maybe that, she works for Two Face at some point. I'm guessing. Maybe, but I, Isabel Rochev was her. The Queen was her own thing too. 
So maybe she took up the name like after the queen died or whatever, but Isabel Rochev was her own character. She's also been known as the Jackal. The Jackal Lafarge. Wade Lafarge. That's really bizarre. Really weird, yeah. I don't know. I I think that it would all make sense if we actually read the uh the stories though. But it's funny. I mean, almost there are so many characters affiliated with the Black Lantern Corps because they all died and they were brought back yeah. to life, you know. Good or bad. I mean, they're all that's that's cool. I don't know. It's an amazing a really important storyline in the entire DC universe. Yeah. Blackest Night. So I'm really- excited to see Legends of Tomorrow though. Yeah. That should be interesting, and hopefully they, they – I mean, like, with the success of Flash and Arrow, I, there's no reason why they wouldn't continue growing this. I don't – I mean, it, it makes sense, you know? If they do it right, then it makes sense for them to continue doing it. Um, real quick, let me – And, I mean, that's – it's like you said. More content for us is, is – I'm going to eat that up, I'm, you know? We only I, win, you know? I like the Atom. I think that they, they've, like – and he's gonna con- they they continue making it truer to the source material as time goes on. Yeah. So I like that. Me too. What is this? Oh, that's, is that Daredevil? Yeah. Uh, just real quick, since we're talking about TV superhero, uh-huh. uh, Daredevil. It's been confirmed that we're getting a season two. I don't of think anyone's we're getting really a season surprised. Two. I don't think. Yeah. No. Who? I was. Telling... Everyone was like, "Oh my god, Daredevil! Have you seen it? It's so good." Okay. Like we've said before, it you guys good. are definitely well aware. It's good. We liked it, but we feel like. It is very uh, – everyone's Slow. reviews of it were unfairly biased. I, I think some people just – they wanted this so much that they're willing to psych themselves up that much about it. It was good. I felt that the whole story with Fisk, a little slow. I'm excited uh, yeah. for season two because uh, like, I hope we get to see more villains. So and you and I were talking about this earlier. I would like to see maybe – I mean Kingpin is such a huge part of the Daredevil you know, continuity. They didn't really do him that – they did him justice, but it was slow. They didn't do him as much. Like, he's supposed to give Daredevil serious hell. And, like, for it to all just boil down into one fight doesn't really make sense. Maybe he breaks out of prison and he's, like, more well, like... I feel I, they, like they set it up. At the, the finale set it up for, for Kingpin to definitely become much more sinister. I want to see him come back with, like, vengeance. I want to... But I, they don't need, like, a main villain. I want to see, like, a bunch of villains. Like, that's the thing that Flash has done right. Is they brought, Electra, man. We most definitely need Electra. Electra nachos. <laughs> nachos. <laughs> Can we have like one scene of her eating nachos? Please. Electra nachos eating nachos. Yeah. And then who else? Bullseye? Uh, we'll probably see some. I mean, th- there's a Spider-Man villains play a part in, in, in Daredevil, Daredevil as well. Well, so. because it's, it's New York City, you know? Yeah. Oh, it is New York City. Yeah. I, it's just such a different vibe. You well, know? because it's one of... Is that I don't, is Hell's Kitchen okay? It is New York. It's a, it's a real thing. Too, yeah. Right? It's like is it one of the boroughs or is it? No, just... it's it's part of Manhattan. Okay, so it, it's part of one of the. Boroughs. Now is Hell is Hell's Kitchen shitty? No, <laughs> like these days you're going to be paying a lot of money to live there, hmm. like a lot. Interesting. So I mean, the, in New York in general, the crime but, rates I mean, are like unfairly low. Granted, there really hasn't been a Chitari invasion in the real New York, so we got to consider that things are a little bit more fucked up in, in the, 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 the Marvel s- universe. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> I, you know, as far as Marvel goes, though, I, I said this earlier. I don't know if I said this on the actual podcast, but I know when you and I were talking, I'd like to see them do Hulk some more justice. Like, we've seen those, like, shitty Hulk movies from before. I, I want to see, like, Planet that. Hulk, you know? Yeah, but like, I think... Build Hulk- that up to that. Like just just the thought of uh, Hulkbuster Iron Man versus Hulk gets me pretty excited, you know. It, yeah, that's doing like you said. That's a little bit of doing the Hulk some justice, you know. I mean, the Hulk has the Hulk is a badass character though, Fuck and the yeah. Hulk is he's kind of like a mindless brute in the Avengers, like or, or in in the cinematic it's universe changed, from what we've though. seen. He, the Hulk can actually have he, the Hulk can hold a conversation. Well, and he gets he get as as we see from the start of the Avengers movie, the first one to the mm-hmm. end of it, he gets better. You know, like uh, he becomes it, that's a secret. You know, he's always mad. And no, he, but he doesn't. The Hulk hasn't had a conversation though. Like but, as the Hulk, no, he's, the Hulk can talk. Like you know, yeah. But you hear that he's like puny god, and we see him like uh, you know. No, but he's but he's still just uh, he's still kind of like a mindless brute. He yeah. says like puny god, and that's it. But like Iron you know, Man gives him, he takes orders. You know, they're like Hulk smash. The Hulk well, I guess doesn't. That's a simple order. The Hulk still. doesn't respond though. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. the Hulk should be respond. Like he can't in Planet Hulk. The Hulk holds conversations. I, like, feel, I, I do think we're getting there though. Yeah, I, I, you, I bet you we'll see more of that this Friday when we see. I hope so. Yeah. I'm excited for it, man. Yeah. 
I am. I'm kind of like I'm kind of getting hyped up, and uh, hopefully it's. Like you said, they said people are saying that Black Widow and Hawkeye are like the stars of the show in this one. Yeah, the, uh, a lot they of the really people who the have seen it already have, you know, in their reviews have said that they were surprised how many, you know, uh, how much screen time they had. Or uh, one one person said Hawkeye had the best one liner of the entire movie. So I'm interested to see what that's all about. Okay. And I've heard that a lot of the trailer footage that we've seen, uh, a lot of it happens very very early on in the movie. So there's a lot to look forward to that we have really no idea about. So uh, Joss Whedon directed this as well, right? Yeah. He's been saying that he wanted to direct a DC movie. Oh, really? I, I mean, it kind of makes sense that he would be a fan of DC movies because he has no part in the DC universe. That's something that he can go and watch himself, you know? And, yeah. You know, he, it, I don't know. Anyway, if what's your position on that? What do you think about him directing a DC movie? Uh, I, I mean, it could work for some franchises, like for Cyborg, maybe. Yeah, well, for, I don't feel like for Shazam. <laughs> yeah, for Shazam, I guess. I feel like he could direct a, a like a proper Justice League movie. No, 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 no. Because dude, that he's he. I my personal opinion. I mean, of course, you're entitled to yours, but he is like too. One-liner joke thing, like. But if is I that, see is Superman, that him, or is that all the people who work with him? That's now? him, dude. It's all him. That's him. That's the way. That's like he. He even said it. He was like talking about how he was like, if I have all these good ideas for like jokes for the characters to like say or whatever, and yeah. like, and DC would be like, we don't do that here. Well, I think that's an unfair assessment too, because if he were to direct a Justice League movie, he could totally do that. It could be like you said, Cyborg and Green Lantern, the ones who have you know funny one-liners to say but green lantern really doesn't have he does like how in the comics he does man. not really in the justice league comics he's like he's the not, comedic relief dude not nearly as much as flash yeah like like he's green lantern takes himself more seriously he's part of the core but i mean people are still it depends on which lantern we're talking about I'm, Hal? i'm yeah i'm talking about Hal. yeah Hal. i mean but Hal is still not like like quirky like the flash i mean well, like you said uh, shazam is because he's a kid i hope that the flash we get isn't grit like super dark and gritty man because oh, i don't want that no nah, me neither uh, the flash the flash like he needs to be lighthearted and and, and it's, the flash is like kind of like the spider-man i almost, feel like grant know? gustin is almost still too serious as the flash but i i'm guessing that's probably because he doesn't have comedy chops you know well but it's also we have to also consider that it's he's still getting used to being the flash and it's still the first season well and he's still he just got his powers is that what you mean yeah he's not he hasn't been a superhero for five years every time we see the flash like remember in in justice league or jail year or whatever where he's like he finds the trickster and he's like you're off your meds again you know yeah and then he takes out like captain cold and whatnot and but apparently that's wally west (laughs) well i mean either way man if if it's barry or if it's wally and young in young justice uh, there's barry you know yeah uh and wally's kid flash but uh and by the way if they would have done a third season of young justice wally would have still been alive because it like I didn't know, re- realize this at the time, but you know how Wally like died uh-huh. or whatever he just like disappeared into the Speed Force. Like no speedster actually dies. Yeah, they just disappear into the Speed Force. So he could potentially come out. There, there are actually human beings that have been lost in the Speed Force too. It uh, it happens at one point uh, during Gorilla Grodd's invasion. Like a uh, Iris West and like a cup a bunch of other people get trapped in the Speed Force. And uh, actually, some of the kids develop powers. They develop speed force powers mm-hmm. just from being in there for so long. Uh, they, but they don't have like speed force powers like the Flash. No, no, no. They so develop the more people, different, fl- different powers. The more people have that have speed force powers or that are utilizing the speed force, the like the less the other yeah people can use it. Because well. yeah, totally. Yeah. It's like being tapped into like Wi-Fi or some shit like that. I don't know. But. Speaking of Gorilla Grodd, I'm really hoping to see uh, Gorilla Grodd with, like, the helmet at some point. Yeah. And so many people, like, I think, I don't know, maybe it's just people aren't that into the, like, the canon of, of DC Comics or whatever. Because I was, like, reading about Gorilla Grodd and they were like, I don't see what the hype is. Like, they should make it more like Planet of the Apes. And he should have, like, an ape army. I was like, no, dude. Well, I mean, wait, wait, why are you saying no? Because... That, that that is what happens. He's I taken, mean, but he takes over. He controls minds. Eventually, though, the people of Gorilla City realize what a dipshit 
G- Grodd is, you know? He's, Wait, he's Grodd... like the worst king in the history of Gorilla City. Well, he he was never really the king. No, he stole the throne. He, yeah, he, yeah. And, he, and he was an outcast, so oh, yeah. Solivar was the guy who, and I love Solivar. He, he's Flash's he's, friend. He is the king. Or he's the 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 one. He's, he's a, the he's once a head, and future but, king, or whatever. Oh, he's he's at the head of his father was the king, and yeah. Grodd killed him. Yeah, and uh, he's but that's how Grodd got the tele the, pe- the telepathy powers because yeah. Solivar had that. So he took that from. I mean, he stole those or figured out. He, Grodd is, is is basically a mad scientist gorilla. I'm like, worried that uh, his portrayal in Flash, uh, we're probably not going to see too much of it, because I imagine it's very expensive to get him to look he's, good. Dude, he's going to be the big villain next season, apparently. Really? From what I heard, yeah. I hope they fucking are ready for that, man, and I hope I hope whatever you know CGI and special effects they're using do that. It's going to get justice. better, man. They've Flash has had Flash has had really good special effects so it, far. It it really has, and I, I totally agree with that. Surprisingly good special. But effects. when we're talking about something like a talking walking gorilla, yeah, with you know who is basically as articulate, if not more, as humans. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever is portrayed on screen, I feel like needs to be true to that. They're going to have to put some money into it and make it like really work. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm stoked for that though. I. You know, I, I don't know. Gorilla Grodd is such a pivotal character in the Flash universe. Like, he's so... I don't know. He's important. Yeah. So, if they screw this up... And also, how are they going to... Like, I, I'm wondering how they're going to wrap up the whole Harrison Wells thing. Like, or Eobard Thom Because he can't die. Yeah. Like, none of the die. none of the characters can die. They just have to, like, lock him up. And, I mean, they come back with a vengeance if he sometimes. Gets sent, I, I'm guessing he'll get sent back to the future. You think so? Um, I don't remember what happened in Flashpoint. So, let's talk about this. Um, I started watching a new show. Oh, yes. We've talked about this before, but not, like, in depth. We, no, we've never talked we've about it. We've mentioned it. No. Yes, because at one point I was watching... Who's the who's the, the one of the main actors from this? From Homeland? Yeah, he's also in Life. In Life? Yeah, I watched it a while back. We uh, Well, I just started watching Homeland this week. Go ahead, yeah. I'll, I'll bring it up right now. Uh, so, I watched the whole first season. I, I literally binged the whole first season. Damian and, Lewis. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know who that is. I literally binged the whole first season and a good I'm almost done with the second. I hear it's really good. I was surprised because I've been like dancing around the idea of watching this show for a long time. It's been on the air since 2011, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh I find someone in a, a Facebook group that has like 6000 members which is mainly about video games, they have other discussions too. Someone was like Homeland is really good and they convinced me to start it. And I thank them because it is it. I have really enjoyed it. The character development is spot on. Like each character is uh, really, really fleshed out, and you you kind of know them, you know. And well, it, th- the show's got great actors too. I mean, it's Claire got, Danes is good. Uh, Damian Lewis is fantastic as well. The actors are really fucking killing it in the show, man. Uh, I like it. It's not very stereotypical, you know, because there's there's are there uh, cliffhangers. There's domestic terrorists and there's you know white people who are terrorists. It's not like everyone is like, oh, the Muslim people are terrorists. It, it's a uh, you is know it a really even, serious show. It's yeah, really serious it's pretty show. serious. Is it serious like a? Is it really serious like Broadchurch serious? But that's a whole different type of serious, man, because Broadchurch is much more emotional. You're dealing with the death of one person, you I'm know? A kid. And Broadchurch is focused on one event that has wrecked these people's lives, you know? You know what I'm saying? I don't think that I... I like, Damian Lewis is such an amazing actor. This guy's fantastic. You, I think you'll like this show, man. Have you should you, give it a chance. You should watch... If Well, I mean, if you get a chance, once you're done with this, there are a couple things that you need to watch. You need to watch Community because you would appreciate it. Yeah. It's super meta, and, and it's you would think it's hilarious. And uh, also, uh, Life, the other show with Damian Lewis, when he was in it before this, and also... Uh, God, who plays Shaw in Person of Interest? Sarah Shahi. Yeah, she's in it too. These guys are all like holding out their microphones, even though the guy's like thirty feet away. Honestly, man, I was I was surprised by how well done this show is. Claire Danes is hot, and uh, she kills it, dude. She's sexy. Like she really, the character she plays, it has me like. Whenever I see her actually get, like, into the emotions of that character, it's so believable, man. Mandy Patinkin? Yeah, but, but, but hit me up, Claire Danes. 
the Allstate guy? <laughs> is that the Allstate guy? I don't know. They look alike. That no, that the uh, this other dude has been in a bunch of stuff too. He was in some sci-fi show. He's good. These are all good actors. You should watch this show, man. I, I I'll I'll give it a chance. I honestly I was I was not expecting to like it this much. Is it a spy a spy show? Kind of, yeah. It it pretty much is like a spy thriller. Is there a lot of action? Adventure? There's surprisingly there's a lot of drama in it too. Heavy dramas are hard for me to watch. Yeah. I, I just, I go like, oh man. Yeah. Like, that's There's like, so oh. much heavy breathing in this too. Like, that's one thing that, the only thing about the show that bothers me is all the heavy breathing. What, what do you mean? Like, they they have a lot of heavy breathing? Like Audib- the audible heavy breathing. Like, <laughs> <sighs> like, and I get what they're trying to do with it, but sometimes it just, it feels a little over the top. There's like an image of, of old Bruce Wayne, I think, up there beating someone. Um, real quick, I want to talk about a couple of the actors. Let's see. Uh, where is it? I just want to talk about a couple of them real quick. Who's that? Uh, the leading lady. This chick. Oh, Mandy, no. Isn't she Mandy? That's Mandy Patinkin. Right? No, Mandy Patinkin is the dude. Who's that? Mandy. Wait, hold up. The, oh, Marina. That's Marina back. Mar- yeah. Oh, Mandy Patinkin is that? Yeah, that's that. What? He's what the has Jewish he been dude. In uh, I don't know. He, he's excellent in this show. Okay, so Marina Bakarin, right? Uh-huh. Are you familiar with her? No. Um, she's currently in two DC properties. Really? Yeah. Okay. So in Gotham, she's uh, she's Jim Gordon's current love interest. While things are fucked up with him and Barbara, okay. she plays Doctor Leslie Tompkins. Oh, I haven't. That's one th- I haven't picked up with Gotham. You'll see her. Uh, she plays Dr. Leslie Tompkins. Right. I was surprised to find out she plays someone else in another DC property. What's that? In Flash. She is the voice of Gideon, Yobard Thon's computer. Oh, really? Computer AI. Yeah. I was... I was Gideon. Yeah. <laughs> He's... Matthew Patinkin's in The Dead timeline like is still intact. Uh, I hated that show. That's another Showtime show. I enjoyed it. Uh, Showtime has had... I I feel like Showtime has had... A mix of good shows and okay shows. Uh, Penny Dreadful, which starts up next week, really solid show. I, I mean, I watched Dexter was good for like the first four seasons. Uh, the Tudors, all four seasons were pre- pretty good for a period drama, you know. Yeah. Um. What What about What about? Well, I mean, I don't know if we need to go through all of the Showtime shows. But... Well, real quick though, the guy who plays the vice president, uh, I just he's the last one I wanted to talk about. We see him right here, here. Hold. Here he comes. Like, oh, damn. He's like, I gotta salute you. Okay. Oh, does he look familiar? Yeah. <laughs> he's in another DC property. Is he in Flash? He's in Arrow. Oh, what? What? He's all. He's the dad. Oh, yeah! He's Robert Queen. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, a lot of that, it kept happening to me in this show. I was like, God, wait, he plays Robert Queen in Arrow, you know? Let's, uh, let's touch on, uh... I don't know if you're ready to touch on this though, but can we talk about Game of Thrones? You want to talk about it again? Well, well no. I mean, like, I, so, just some new stuff happened. All the people are hissing at Khaleesi. <laughs> They're hissing at it. Yeah. She should not have killed that guy. I mean, she just, you know, she does. What Spoiler she alert! She I'm to. sorry, but I, I feel like what we should do with Game of Thrones, man, is is wait till the season's over to oh, talk man. about it a little bit. It's that, like that's a ways away. I know. I'm but... gonna. I'm. I'm just gonna like. I'm just gonna watch all the rest of the episodes. There's only two that haven't aired. I'm gonna watch and them. One both of them tonight. airs tonight. I'm gonna watch both of them tonight. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I feel like it'll be good to save Game of Thrones discussion because I don't think we should talk about it every week. Literally, the past five weeks we've talked about Game of Thrones. Have we really? Yes. Time flies. Yeah. Have we talked about? Uh, so in Silicon Valley, though, there's what about some. It? Well, now, now, <laughs> I, that show is that show is is really good. Like yeah, the the really way that good. they ended it with like kind of a cliffhanger, but there's Mariachi's playing, <laughs> and he like it's just so awkward. I don't know. The writing Chris, on that show is fantastic. Uh, Chris Hardwick was saying he thinks that's his his favorite comedy ever. It's well, it's one of my favorite shows on like on the air right now. Yeah. I don't, it's just so well written and put together. Yeah. 
The the life. What is it? Okay, this? so I watched a couple documentaries. I want to talk about them. Life I think you should, of Robert or Fred Durst. Dude, you should totally watch this. I watched. Yeah, I watched Limp all Biscuit. six episodes of a docu series called The Jinx, and it's about Robert Durst. Are you familiar with him? Slim Biscuit. No. Fucking up your town. <laughs> Take it to the Matthews Bridge, you motherfucker. Should, you should really watch this, man. Like this shit was crazy. Does he say take it to the Matthews Bridge at all in it? Take it to the Matthews Bridge. John Otto. <laughs> all my life, I've had more money than I could spend, and it didn't make me happy. He's in jail. She talked on the telephone with her husband, then she vanished, and no one has seen Kathleen Durst since. Durst was wanted for murder in Texas. He's a suspect for murders in Los Angeles. Is this the guy that, like, dressed up as a woman? Watch, dude. To one of very same guy, yeah. Might be a little eccentric. I think Bob is very smart. I mean, he's what managed a freak. to get away with three murders. He is being unfairly accused. Bob Durst may be the unluckiest man in the world. Lonely. Well, I thought he was darling. He's not crazy. He's diabolical. I believed him from the very beginning. I wish that I... You should interview him. I think you'd have a lot of fun with that. Is he crazy enough to participate? Hi, Mr. Is he actually in this? Yeah. Why it's this? it's really no like chilling. Is he dead? No. no one knows. The only witness left alive to even talk about it is Robert Durst. We have very compelling evidence. This case was not investigated the way it should have been. A lot of smoke doesn't necessarily mean fire, but I think there's a lot of smoke here. I'll tell the whole truth. Nobody tells the whole truth. Is he in jail still? He's in jail right now. Dude, honestly... Do you think he did it? I went through the first three episodes thinking that this guy... There's a possibility he might be innocent. But he's not. There's no way. towards the end, man, you really see... Like, like, I've said the word diabolical too many times today, but that other guy said it, and it is spot on. Because eventually these interviews with him became, like, disturbing to me. Like, the things he was saying and, like... Just, like, looking at the guy get, gives me chills. And at the very end, there's, like, it all, everything comes, you know. You really like psychopaths, huh? You, dude, you should watch this, man. Every, I've, read, of, I've read this guy's entire story, actually. A I lot read, of, there, was a, there was, like, a, a story in FHM, or it was in a, or GQ about this guy. It was, like, a 15-page story a couple of years back that I read the whole thing. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll watch it. I, I mean, I highly recommend it to people. A lot of people have have watched this man. It's like one of the most watched things on HBO right now, besides Game of Thrones. <laughs> so I recommend and, and, it. And then you have Doomsday up there. What's Doomsday? Oh, where? Right there. Right here. Yeah, that's a weird version of Doomsday. It's funny how you have like all these serious things, and there's like a, a <laughs> Doomsday right there in <laughs> Superman. What is this even from? I have no idea. Do you see, like, the bright colors, though? That kind of makes sense as far as the whole Superman continuity goes. Oh, dude, and he just popped out of this, like, meteor like that. <laughs> that does not look like Doomsday, though. It looks like a really shitty version of Doomsday. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, it's not that bad. He lo- he has, like, a mullet, dude. Yeah. Real- okay, sorry. What the hell is this? <laughs> is this something that you in- intended us to watch? No. The history of Atari. Well, I mean, it's kind of similar to what I intended. I watched another documentary. Atari Game Over. Highly recommend this one as well. Uh, it's about you just the rise... love documentaries now. It's, a, it's about the rise and fall of Atari. Part of that landfill is a burial site of an entire industry. A burial site? It's literally an hour and a half from us, dude. In, in Alamogordo. It's a burial site of Atari games or Atari like they buried like a couple million copies of the ET game, which is considered the worst game ever. You should watch this. This is on Netflix. Why? The worst video game ever. ET for Atari. It was bad, brutal, unfair. It didn't make a lot of sense. How did a company that was so innovative fail so? Oh badly? yeah. <laughs> they look like Jared Leto as the Joker. Yeah. <laughs> Why did they bury these things, though? Because uh, millions of them were returned. So they're just like, fuck it, we're just going to bury them. And they made much more than they sold. Yeah, this was what I was made 
You feel bad for this guy, man, because his whole legacy is fucked because of this. And he was, you know, ET, yeah. And he was a talented guy, man. He had a lot going for him. He had to give up his passion just because of this. Because of the ET game. And he gets no recognition for his past works. Well, I mean, this was from back in a time when video games worked differently than they do today. Well, like, the whole industry was just different than it is today. The industry didn't exist until this. Atari is the one, you know, without Atari, there would be no video games today as we know them. So, but they, so Atari themselves were like, we're going to make an E.T. game. Yeah. Yeah. And they made like, him w- make it in five weeks. Now, now it's like... It's like the companies are like, okay, you guys, we're, we they contact game developers, yeah. and it wouldn't it wouldn't like bankrupt P, like the Sony, you know, making. Well, there was game. a lot of other factors behind why Atari went down. ET was just one of them. He said you wanted to know where the Ataris are. Wait, this is the spot. The concern is it also may have something else buried in the landfill. We might crack open a sealed tomb of mercury laced pigs. Mercury laced pigs? They buried a lot of shit in the dump at Al- Alamogordo, man. Mercury laced pigs? They did testing on something? I don't know. The burial in Almagordo is Atari's funeral. This sort of felt like a religious pilgrimage to me. Is my face gonna melt off? I don't know. ET comes out, the industry dies, that's what people will remember it for. Everything has its ups and its downs, doesn't it? It's available on Netflix. I highly recommend it's it. It's on Sexbox, too. Yeah, it's free on Xbox right now. Dun, 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 dun. So, uh, is... Do you think that the Chitari were based on Ataris? <laughs> God damn you, man. Do you think? Just, you would. Do you think that they make... They should make edible underwear out of meat? All right, so everyone prepare for download to make fun of me some more. Jesus Christ! How many fucking documentaries did you watch, dude? This one, I'm sh- yeah, I'm sure it's amazing. I've you should heard, watch I've, it. I've, 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 okay, <laughs> I've, good God! You, uh, this one's called. It's C- like you say the same thing about each of these. Doc- you gotta watch this one, dude. Uh, this one's called Citizen Four, and it, it's about Edward Snowden. And- He's not the fourth citizen of the United States. That was like James Madison. <laughs> So, Nicolas Cage has been cast in, uh, there's gonna be a feature about Edward Snowden. Oh, really? And Nicolas Cage has been cast, our lord and savior. I wonder... The one true god. I mean, honestly, this guy gets... Legally, he's kind of, he's considered a traitor, but he, you know, this guy might be the one true patriot left in this fucking country. Oh, there's several patriots, but he's, he's, uh, he's been charged with treason, though. And, well, he's been charged with uh, high treason, right? No, com- he's been charged with espionage. So he would be he would be placed in one of the most like uh, high security prisons. That's where spies are put. Well, they talk about how the the law that he's they're trying to try him under is uh, a World War One era law. So there's no defense. It's but that's it's based on someone who sells secrets to a foreign government, which he did not do. You know, yeah. he just exposed crimes committed by, by our, our government. Exactly. Yeah. To the people of our government. Yeah. Dude, this one, honestly, man, out of all the the ones I've mentioned, this one is. Well, that looks really good because they really didn't reveal anything. The the Atari preview was like a fucking five minute. I feel like I've watched the whole goddamn movie right now. You kind of have. It was good. I mean, I'd I'd reckon I'm probably a bigger video game fan than you, and that's, you know. People had sex there. No. On the screen. No. What is that? Just hover over it. Where? The sex. Where is the sex? It's on the. How can you not see the sex? It's there. Here? What is that? Love Rosie? Apparently this movie's already out. You have done this before? Yeah. Haven't you? Am I brushing my teeth? Ah, oh, bollocks. Oh. I've seen it. Looks like a good movie. You, God, please don't invite me to go see that with you. <laughs> no, I don't want to see it. Uh, real quick, we're get, we're getting ready to wrap up. But I do still want to see the second best exotic Marigold Hotel. 
Dude, it's an old lady movie. Go watch it, man. You can watch it on iTunes now already, probably. Really? Yeah. Uh, real quick, one piece of video game no, news. No, no. It's extremely sad. <sighs> that is so fucked up. Guillermo del Toro has announced that he is no, you know, he's not going to be working on Silent Hills. Dude, that's so fuck. That's bullshit, man. Yeah. It was. It was like. Ramping up to be such a good thing, too. Uh, here's what he said in his tweet. It's not going to happen, and that breaks my greasy heart. My greasy heart. It's <laughs> disgusting. Guillermo del Toro is awesome, man. But I think, What does that even mean, my greasy heart? I think, you know, he's he's fallen victim to this before. I think he reaches a little too much. Yeah, I agree. He, he over... He over... <sighs> He overreaches and, and he, he, he like over himself in, too thin. He over inundates himself with like different things and like we want him to do Justice League Dark. We wanted him to do this and he's like I can't do everything. Yeah. He, what chances are, you know what? Well, I bet you I'm this just is... forecasting this right now. He's going to be like can't do Justice League Dark. Uh, I it's probably true, man, especially since he's still working right now on Assassin's Creed and then after that he's going to work on Pacific Rim 2. Oh, but who cares about Pacific Rim 2? He does, man, because that's that's his, you know, Pacific Rim is a universe built by him. It's not, you know... Really? It's, that's his thing? Yeah. it's to- I'm pretty sure it's mostly his thing. I didn't know that. Um, but, you know, the guy the guy is putting it mildly a creative genius. I look forward to whatever he does. But it makes me sad that he's not going to be working on Silent Hills. Some people are saying... Is it still even going to happen? Probably not. Dude, the, the way that Hideo Kojima's relationship with Konami is right now... It's rocky. It's really rocky, and you know we're probably going to see him leave Konami completely. So, even if it does continue, whoever's going to do it, it's not going to be the same. I, I doubt unless it. Unless they will. put, I don't know, unless they find the right people to work on it. Well, and I wonder if uh, what what's the deal with Norman Reedus because I'm sure his Norman contract Reedus? his contract probably stipulates that he, he has ha- to stick with it. He no, that he has to work. It has to be the same people. Nah. It, it, I bet you if, if Toro and Kojima are gone, he's not contractually obligated to finish it. How is that? What if they already paid him and, you know? I doubt they already paid him. Because they probably gave him an advance. He said that he hasn't even done any work on it besides the work for PT. Yeah, but they gave him an advance for that. True. I'm and, sure. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe they paid him for that and this is going to be a separate thing. Interesting or note. PT is going to be coming off the PlayStation Store completely. So... Uh, what, so what play does this while mean? you can. Does it, it, is this mark the death of this game? Which you know, I think that's it, a damn shame too. Because PT was such a like an interesting mini like you know, I don't know. Honestly, if that was the direction they were going with Silent Hills, I would pay a hundred and twenty dollars. I'd pay double for that game. I would too. You I know, agree. and it, it's been so long since we had a really good horror game, man. And after playing PT, that's the one thing that I thought. I was like, wow, we are finally going to get a top-notch horror game, you know? Well, yeah, that, that I mean, PT was, like, horrifying as it was. And, yeah. I mean, if you Probably put that one in a Silent Hill environment, I've ever played. put that in a Silent Hill environment, you know, and, and elaborate on that, Yeah, maybe that's just, like, walking through one house of, uh, you know, the Silent Hill totally. verse or something like that. I don't know, but... this All I know is this it's makes sad. Really sad. That's really sad. Oh, well. Oh, well. Well, that's our show. Do you have some shit to plug? Goodbye. <laughs> I'm download. D-O-W-N. L-O-W-D. You can find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash official download. On SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash download. And uh, shoot me a tweet at Twitter. Or, I mean, just at... <laughs> it's actually, you could... Twitter.com slash download here. It's at what? At download here, right? Yeah, or at download okay. here. But you could also go to my, my Twitter website, I mean, why would anyone site. go, oh my god. You could do whatever you please, really. <laughs> They're really, I mean, that is really how you get to my Twitter page. Uh, Obviously. But, you know, go figure. Uh, and, you know, we're, we, this is the macro cast, and Alex is going to tell you about macro records and all the great and magical stuff that we do. And If you enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to go on iTunes and leave us a review. It would be most appreciated, and it helps get the show into the ears of some new listeners as well. Um, if you want to tweet us, use... Uh, tweet us at, at macro records and don't forget to use the hashtags ask snoo if you want to ask him something snoo how was your week awesome i i, I think he uh you know i could see him visibly uh like teeming with joy during this episode i think he enjoyed a lot of the topics a lot of the conversation yeah every week it gets better and he offers more <laughs> insightful uh he's just storing input. everything we said you know
Well, that's we're the only voices he hears. Well, Isn't that kind of creepy? He's a silent, but he's a strong silent type. You know yeah, what I mean? Totally. One day he's going to break and just talk for days. If you're watching on video, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. It's youtube.com slash macrorecordstv. All our episodes are available on video there. Uh, go to our website. This is macro.com. It's the hub for all things macro records. Our blog, music, podcast, let's plays. Everything we do is right there in one convenient source. Stay posted. New music is coming soon. Yes. Janine. Janine. When's the new music coming? Call the distributor, Janine. Call our distributor. Call in groups. And she's working on it. We shall see you next week, everybody. We're getting it posted. Enjoy DRVC. Goodbye.